All right, guys, so we're here in the parking lot. Um, it's our demo car. Um, last time it went to the shop because there's a problem with the parking brake. And I told them it needs a caliper. And now they drove it here in the parking lot and the car won't move. The car, the car is stuck. So our parking brake on there. Let me just take it out. And let me try driving. Maybe it will drive now. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> so I brought my scan tool here uh, just in case I have to maybe move the actuator for the parking brake. So I guess it's good now. Um, we'll just go back to the shop because the last time they told me that the car won't move. So let's go back to the shop and then let's do some testing. And I'll show you the testing that I did that I. Um, what do you call that? Think that we got a parking brake issue, not an electrical issue. So, um, yeah, let's go back to the shop. Okay, so we're back in the shop. Um, I'm just gonna hook up our scan tool before I'm gonna set up in the hoist. I'm gonna go here, my program, GDS. Okay, so let me just set up. And then we're gonna go to our active test or actuation test. And we're gonna go to our ABS side. So what we're after is we're after here the apply and release, right? So I'm gonna go here to our current data, look for that data PID. There we go. There's a voltage and current. So we'll just press both of them. Motor current right motor voltage motor current left and motor voltage and we got a release right hand and what was that motor state so we'll know if it's applied or release i'm just gonna graph that so what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna activate our parking brake there and let's look for that one right now it's release so i'm gonna apply it so you see that there's park applied moves and then i'm gonna go release it again all right i'm gonna apply again you can see our voltages are changing so which is good and release so now i'm gonna try to actuate it so in here we're gonna go apply ignition on there so i'm just gonna put the ignition on we're here under release i'm gonna just press start on this guy okay um i'm gonna go release Okay. Mm, apply again and see. And then release. Okay. Let me go stop there. Um I'm going to try again, one more, apply, okay, 
I'm gonna go release. As you can see there, every time I apply, we get some warning lights there. And I can hear at the back the motor is activating, but not sure yet if our left side is working, right? Um, as of now, this motor activation here, as you can see, they line up nicely. Um, the last time I checked this was one of the motors especially the left side is delayed so if i'm gonna apply for brakes um parking brake the right side will apply and the left side won't apply until i press it again there's a time that the left side will apply so right now um i'm released so i'm gonna go apply again okay now we got something going on on our um, motor. As you can see there, on our left side, it got release position and it didn't do anything when I apply for our or active test, right? As you can see here on our right side, it works fine. But if I'm gonna apply it again, it's still the same thing, so I'm gonna release it. So, the right side of what I'm hearing the motor is moving there okay now it applied again on the left side so yeah um, we got something going on as by activating and releasing multiple times um, I think we got an open circuit on that motor. So we're going to check that. Uh, at least we know now that our left side is acting up right now. Because earlier it was working fine. Right? So I'm going to go outside and set up this vehicle. And I'm going to remove the tires. Okay, so we remove our tires right now this guy is applied I can't move the disc so I'm gonna activate again um, do the release activation so right now I just heard the right side is releasing um, I'm gonna release it again and see nothing I'm gonna apply it so I can hear the motor on the right side is applying um, the left side now release again so as you can see here this is our right side um, and the left side doesn't do anything at all so now what we're gonna do is um, this is a motor so there should be a resistance value on each motor and so I'm gonna remove this guy here the connector and let's compare our reading right so let me grab the multimeter so I have this I have my meter here um, I'm just gonna put it like that. Let's 
put the light. Okay, so you guys cannot see anything. Okay, so as of right now, my meter is reading OL, so I'm just gonna connect both of them. So that's good. So now I'm just gonna probe the two pins on our motor. So right now, I got 0.3 ohms, right? I think that's short. So, we got 0.3 ohms on our motor. I'm gonna remove our um, right side wheel, right rear wheel, um, and compare the reading. So as you can see there, my rotor is spinning. Um, I'm just going to remove this connector here and then we'll measure our systems. Okay, so right now it's reading OL, so check your leads. Right now it's reading 0 ohms or 0.3, same thing as on the left side. So now I'm gonna probe this connector here or the motor side. What do we got? Uh, right now we got 0.8 or 0.7, alright? Is that a big difference? Because the other side is reading 0.3. Okay, so anyway, um, we're just gonna replace our caliper. Here's our new one here. Um, the only thing I can see here right now is, as you can see here, the comparison of our current. Um, on the right side, it's reading four amps. The left side is two amps, right? As you can see that. Um, and that's the time after that that our um, motor on the left side didn't work right on this side here so and also um, I just check the resistance value on this guy here the brand new one is showing 4 ohms Yeah, 3.7 ohms. Oh, my my hand is blocking the thing, so we'll do that again. So here's our brand new one, and as you can see, there it's reading 3.9. And our both sides, I don't know why it's reading the right side is point. Seven two. Um, let me double check that. So yeah, um, I'm pretty confident there is a motor problem. Um, but we saw that they have both the same resistance. The last time we checked this, it was on point three, and the other side was point nine. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this. Let's do that. And then, as of now, this guy is applied the parking brake is applied so i'm gonna maybe let it cool down for now and then disengage again the parking brake and see okay so um some of our viewers or subscribers um was asking on how to service uh, with the electric parking brake so yeah one way to do that is using a scan tool to release the motor. The second is, um, I never tried it on this um, brand, on Hyundai, that we apply directly um, to the motor power and ground. 
uh, just to retract that motor but since we know that I know that this motor is garbage we're gonna try to do some experiment uh, just in case you guys have doesn't have any scan tool right um, let's see if we can service our brakes without using the scan tool right so I'm just gonna remove this caliper because every, we just service our brakes or replace our rotors once we know that our pads are worn out right and since this brake pad is still almost new um, what I'm gonna do is I got my brake um, piston compressor I'm just gonna put it here and then we're gonna pump the brake as if the brakes are worn and then let's try our power and ground if we can retract the motor and we can push the piston okay so my um, piston depressor is too big or it's too thick so I'm using a, another um, piece of metal so I'm just gonna push our brake as if that our brake pads are worn so this piston will should move in right Okay, you can leave it. Thank you. <coughs> so as you can see there, our piston just went in. So the other way is, so let me just release that, right? Because our motor has a position sensor, um, I think, so it knows what position of that motor to go in and out in my opinion um, so the other way is what we do always is we go to our ABS management and there's gonna be a brake pad change mode as you can see there so what it does is if your brakes are worn it pushes the motor there and we can push the piston but what if we don't have that um, tool we don't have a scan tool so now we're gonna try to apply power so I just remove our connector there so so what I'm gonna do is apply power I don't know which polarity so I can just try um, and see and then let's see if it works okay so I have my um, jumper um, what call that a booster pack so as you can see there I connected that to our wires here and I have this jumper wire so I'm just gonna try to apply first that one didn't do anything at all let me go reverse it that's it hmm. um, weird. so right now so right now I don't know if that motor really went in so let me try to push this <laughs> so 
So I push it all the way, right? Um, the question there is, I don't know the direction of that motor. Because um, <coughs> I don't know if the polarity, if it's applied or released. Um, hmm. I think you can do it. But the question there is, um, if you will know if it's the releasing movement of the motor or if it's applying because i just tried hey hey man what's going say, on? Brother, you good? Good, good, good. <laughs> nice to see you working yeah. <clears throat> so um because i tried first positive on the left side and right side negative i heard the motor and the second time is i reversed the polarity i heard the motor and then i can push the piston right so um, I think the best bet there is if you really have no choice to service the brakes without the scan tool, maybe you can try that what I did. Um, but if you have an option to use the scan tool to just retract the motor, I think my recommendation is to use the scan tool because I think the scan tool knows when you do a brake pad change mode, it will release it, right? So. Now what, what we're gonna do next is I'm just gonna remove this 12 millimeter here bolt and then um, swap it with our new um, caliper. Then we're gonna turn that to 21 foot pound. Okay, so we're just gonna go back to our scan tool. Um, we're just gonna clear the code. Alright guys, so as you can see, <laughs> I'm still in the car and we're under the hood right now. So um, the car is not still fixed, I still have that code open. So I went to our ABS module, I just want to make sure that my connections are good. And let me just put this mirror, so as you can see there, there's brake fluid dripping. And on our connector side, I don't know if you're gonna see that on the mirror. Our connector there on the ABS side is full of fluid. 
Oh man, um, I don't know if that guy is leaking. So let me clean it up. So I cleaned that our ABS module. By now, we should have no warning light. Yeah, there's no warning light there. Let's start the car. I'm gonna turn on our brake. So, so far, our brake, parking brake, is working. Um, now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna try to pump this brakes here. So I'm just pumping right now. As you can see there, our warning light is on again. So I'm gonna double check that um, ABS module and see if there's a leak there again. Off. On. I'm trying to do something here. What did you say? The mic can't hear you. <laughs> what did you say? I'm gonna try to do something on. Okay, that's on. Off. On. Okay, off. Release. Okay, go. Go. Pull. Uh, release. Again, pull. Uh huh. Alright, guys. Um. <clears throat> So I just left on this car um, overnight and then I put everything back together except our connector for our ABS module and I left a paper here just to see a mark if it's really leaking from our ABS coming out to our module here. So as you can see there, um, I'm just gonna move my flashlight and there's some wet on the paper. So. I'm 100% sure um, there's something wrong on this ABS so we'll wait for it and we'll do the repair and we'll check our operation for everything especially on the left rear um, parking brake 